Hi guys, and welcome to the show. Today we're gonna to talk about the new Pioneer DEQS 1000A Universal Sound Processor. Let's get started. So new into the market, Pioneer is coming out with this guy. It's their answer to a DSP. They're calling it a universal sound processor. Let's go ahead and open this thing up and take a look and see what comes in the box. You get the main wiring harness. You get the remote eye input. You get a standard five foot Pioneer USB extension. You get a brake wire. You get the little handheld remote. Some mounting brackets and the instruction manual slash warranty card. And the unit is buried inside. We'll go ahead and open this up and take a look at the side. So Pioneer labels the top of the device here. But let's turn it on its side and take a look at what they actually are talking about. The main power light, the reset switch, the main USB input, your IR input, that's this guy right here for the remote control, your high level or auxiliary input, it just has one left and right input, your tweeter or front output, your rear or mid output, subwoofer output, now all of these are four volts of output, your parking brake input, as well as your main power harness input. Now since we mentioned that, let's go ahead and take a look at the main powering harness. When you take a look at the powering harness, you'll see that there's a male end and a female end. Go ahead and plug this end directly into the unit and the reason why you want to do that is because you have to cut this end off and the instructions here it shows that you need to remove this in order to do the wiring now the wiring is for the most part very similar to any other pioneer or aftermarket radio for that matter but let's go ahead and go over it one thing I did forget to mention is this has a 25 watt by 4 amplifier built into it that is about 14 watts of real power so it's very similar to the amplifier that be built into a aftermarket market radio. Now starting here we have a set of whites which is going to be solid white and white with a black stripe. That's going to be your driver's front which is going to be our number one as well as your driver's tweeter output. Switching to gray, gray black, that is going to be passenger front number two or your passenger tweeter output. Green, green black is going to be rear driver number three or driver's mid-range output. Purple, purple black is going to be passenger rear four or passenger rear mid. Now we have a set of orange and orange black. That is gonna be your high level input driver. Then we have a set of brown, brown black. That is gonna be your passenger high level input. And then we have our standard colors. Yellow is your battery or constant 12 volts. Black is ground. Red is accessory or key. And a blue white output to turn on your amplifiers. Now there's one other set of settings on this. These switches here on the bottom. The first one is gonna be your input selector, either RCAs, which are these guys over here, or speaker wire, which is your orange and brown here. Now it just has, like I said, two channel input, a left and a right, and that's it. Then you have DSP mode, standard or network. Now for those of you that never done anything network, that's why I was saying front or tweeter or rear or mid. But let's go ahead and let's talk about that for a minute. Now we're gonna give you a demonstration of it once we plug it into the phone and show you the app, but just so you have an idea of what this means, is you can use either either the 50 watt by four amplifier to power a set of tweeters and a set of mid range and then just have a sub amp or if you have all amplifiers and you'd like to do tweeter mid sub no rear you can come out of the front with the tweeter the rear with the mid now it has a full crossover built into it so that you can adjust either one standard mode has one set network mode has another now for your tweeter and mid you have these crossover points to choose from. On the high side, you have 1 1.25, 1.6, 2, 2.5, 3.15, 4, 5, 6.3, 8, 10, and 12.5. Fully adjustable between 6, 12, 18, or 24 dB. Now because it has a mid-range channel, it has a bandpass, meaning it has also a block for the mid-range. That is going to be the same as the subwoofer, which is 25, 31.5, 40, 50, 63, 80, 100, 125, 160, 200, or 250. They're again adjustable between 6, 12, 18, and 24 dB per octave. The subwoofer also has a minus 24 to plus 10 dB volume 
volume control. It has a polarity either 0 or 180 degrees. Now when you're in standard mode, you have a whole different set of crossover points. They're all going to be the same options whether you're in sub, mid, or high. And those frequencies are 50, 63, 80, 120, 125, 160, and 200. They're again adjustable between 6, 12, 18, and 24 dB per octave. Now just like in network mode, the sub channel is going to have negative 24 to 10 dB of adjustment as well as you can adjust the phase between 0 and 180. Now a couple things just to know about the unit before we go ahead and power it up is that you can play music and tune it when playing through the Pioneer app. And that app you might be asking about is the Sound Tune app from Pioneer. You can download it to either an iPhone or an Android. Now when plugged into the USB, it will charge both types of phones. Another unique feature about this is it's mixed audio playback. And basically what that means is if you're listening to your phone and you need sound from the factory radio to come through at the same time, it allows you to do that. That's switchable when using the handheld remote. You basically have three options. You have the phone, the main head unit, or factory head unit, or both. And the reason why you might want that is for Bluetooth calls and or navigation prompts from your factory radio. So it will go ahead and push those through while you're listening to your phone. As far as what makes all the magic happen, this has a 48-bit dual-core DSP built into it. It has a 13 band internal EQ, but when paired with your phone, you get a 31 band EQ. Now, the internal frequencies that it has are 50, 80, 125, 200, 315, 500, 80, 500, 800, 1.25K, 2K, 3.15K, 5K, 8, and 12.5K, adjustable plus or minus 12 dB. But once you plug your phone in, that'll automatically go to 31 bands or a standard one-third octave EQ. The frequency response to the unit is between 10 hertz to 20,000 hertz, and its physical size is six and three quarters by three and three quarters by one and five eighths. Now, one of the other things that this will allow you to do is auto calibration for your high level input, which we'll talk about more once we plug it in. So for this example, we're gonna go ahead and use it on an iPad. It will work on an iPad even though it is an iPhone app. Go ahead and launch it here. Now, when you first launch it, it's gonna ask you about 100 okays and, and agreements and access and all this other fun stuff. Just go ahead and keep kicking yes and okay and whatnot, and you'll eventually end up on this page. Now, when it first launches on an iPad, naturally it's gonna to be in the iPhone aspect ratio. Go ahead and stretch it out to your screen. And in case you're wondering, you can also run it like this if you're planning on putting an iPad in your dash. Now across the bottom, you have your music library, boost, EQ, effect, and processor. So we'll go ahead and we'll select EQ. Once you're on the EQ, you have a couple different choices. Default is powerful as always. You have super bass, vocal, natural, vivid, dynamic, flat, custom A, and custom B. If you've ever owned a Pioneer head unit, it. These are the same EQ settings that come on that. We'll switch over to effect. Here you'll notice something that says concert hall. This is a bit of nostalgia. So we'll go ahead and turn this on. This will expand the sound out and make your car sound bigger, like a concert hall. This is very similar to an older style DSP or the style DSP that you might have in your house, where you have something like concert hall, open air, club, or cafe. And of course, off. If you don't like it, there again, you can turn it off off. Processor. Now on this page, this is kind of your home page, so to speak. Through, smartphone, or mix. This is that mode we were talking about. This is the mode where it will play your car and your smartphone at the same time. It's selectable here, as well as through the handheld remote. Source level adjust. This is so that if your smartphone isn't as loud as your radio, you can go in and adjust that here. Then you have your master volume control. So you can turn the volume up, turn the volume down, as well as have mute. So if we hit the menu icon, you can go into the sound processor settings. Welcome. Set the optimal speaker settings for your car. Select start. Manufacturer's name. They would like you to enter the manufacturer of your car. We'll call it test. Model, one. Year, 2019. Is it a right hand or a left hand drive? We'll select register. Now once we get to here, we have two options that are default into it. We have a sample page and we have the factory default settings. If you'd like, you can just hit the factory default settings. Now once on this page, the first thing that comes up is the processor EQ. If you select that, that'll take you to custom A or custom B. When we were on the EQ page, it had all the presets and it had custom A or B. If we select edit, it'll go ahead and launch the EQ. Now once here, you can just drag up and down 
your EQ settings. Now, if this is a little bit too much for you, like it's a little too tight, go ahead and grab this guy here and you can expand it out to make it a little bit easier to use. You can also select fine tune and this will allow you even more flexibility as far as ease of use. When you're done, select X. Now if you hit this green arrow over here, it'll bring up the 13 band option. Select that. Some data will be lost and that's natural because you're going from 31 bands down to 13. It will try to keep your curve as close as it can, but you are gonna be losing some. Now, if you want, it also has a reset, which will set it back to factory, and you can select custom B as well. Now, if you've set up a setting, you select copy, go back over here, select paste, and then if you like, you could readjust it. So if you were close on, let's say, B, and you wanted to just keep B, but go back and make A and make another EQ setting that's similar but different, copy and paste will work for that. For those that aren't familiar with EQ, 20 hertz on the left side is going to be your sub side, 20,000 hertz on your right side is going to be your tweeter side. Select your back arrow. Next up is balance and fader. You can move that wherever you like. And then when you're done, select center. Advanced setting. It's set to standard. We'll go back, don't worry, and show you network mode. Here it has your standard front, rear, and sub. And it's showing you what this is set to with these five numbers here. If you select the little EQ icon in the bottom, it'll go ahead and pull up these icons that are corresponding to the icons here, here, and in the other numbers. Select this one. This is your level control. This will allow you to turn up and down the volume for that corresponding speaker. So in this case, we're on front right. We can turn it up to 10 dBs of boost if we want, or down 24 dBs of boost. We can copy it, tap one of the icons here, here, or here, and paste it in if we like. Next is going to be our distance from the speaker to our head. We can either choose a preset or we can choose manual. Now default is centimeters, but if we select the three dots on the top, we can go ahead and select inches. You can select what seat you would like. In this case, we'd select front left, select save, go ahead and tap, and now we can adjust our inches by scrolling across the bottom. If we're on the subwoofer, which is the bottom circle here, we can adjust between in phase and normal for the subwoofer. Swipe down closes it. Next is going to be our crossover point. Tap here in the center for front, rear, or sub. Simply tap the arrow to the left or right. We'll adjust the frequency. And if we tap the next set of arrows down where it says slope, we have our 6, 12, 18, 24 dB slope. When we're done with everything, there again, select save, and you're all set. Tap the back arrow, and those are the only options we have available to us on here. Now, if we hit the little drawer icon here at the top, that'll take us back to this page. We also had a sample, but what we wanna do is select Add New. We'll call it Test, select Save, go ahead and tap it. Now, the first thing that's gonna come up and it's gonna ask us is do we wanna do Standard, or do we wanna do Three-Way Network Mode? Let's select that, and we'll select Done. Now we have a pop-up. We didn't select the switch on the bottom of the radio for Network Mode. So even though we selected it on the app, if you get this warning, that's why. So we'll go ahead and turn the processor over and select the switch. Now make sure when you flick the switch that the unit is either unplugged or the power is off. Turn it back on. And we can select test. Now on this, there again, all these top things are going to be the exact same. When we get to network mode, you'll see now the representation for network mode. We have tweeters, we have two mid-range, and we have a subwoofer. What's missing from this picture is rear fill. There is no rear fill when you're in network mode. It is strictly this and this alone. It has the same inner workings. Tap the icons here and it'll pull up our adjustments. For the mid-range, we have the high-pass crossover and the low-pass crossover. And you can see a graphical representation of it here on the top. This is called a bandpass, meaning the mid-range will play up so high and then down so low. We can go in and we can manually input our time alignment, just like we could in standard mode. We can also turn it off if we don't want it. You can do that in standard mode as well. When we get what we like, go ahead and select save. When we're done with the processor, we can just hit this bottom arrow here. And it'll take us back to our main page. So as we can tell, there's a lot of things that the universal sound processor will do for you. But as we said at the beginning, this will do high level input. Now the problem with most high level input is that it's coming from a source unit that has some kind of equalization done on it. And this is capable of correcting that. What you want to do is two things. For one, you need to go to the Pioneer website Site. Go to pioneerelectronics.com. Come over here to the drop down where it says car. Navigate over to the amplifier section. 
Come down to where it says sound processors, click on it. The only sound processor they have is the DEQ. So click on that. Scroll to the bottom of the page and right here where it says downloads, you'll see it says calibration as well as calibration instructions. Go ahead and click on the calibration file and then download that to your desktop. And then click on the calibration instructions if you want a print version of it. Now it's gonna download a zip file to your desktop. Go ahead and unzip it and you'll have the audio track you need. Now once you have that file, so you're gonna need it on a disc, some form of a, a portable media device that you could play through an aux jack or possibly a thumb drive. Something that has the capability of getting sound into your stereo, but not from the device you're using to tune it. For that, you can't do it for this. Even though you can play music from this and tune it at the same time, for this, you can't. Then come into the unit and select menu. Select your sound processor. This top one here where it says on analyzed, go ahead and click that. It's gonna briefly explain what we just talked about. Select next. If you're here, you can click go to website and it'll show you where those files are. Click okay, I understand. It's gonna ask you if you have that material, that source unit of theirs in the unit and ready to go. And if you do, select ready. Is the test prepared? Yes. Play test signal, select next. Now what it's gonna do is it's gonna go ahead and go and calibrate it. And it's listening to that track as in comparison to what it's supposed to look like coming in over that high level input. Now we're gonna get an error of course because it's not connected, but if not, you would have gotten a finished. Now what that's gonna go ahead and do is correct that signal coming out of that factory radios two channels into this so that it is basically as flat as possible. And then you can apply your EQ on top of it. Now if by chance you're doing it the right way and you get this warning in the instructions there is a whole list of things that you could have possibly done wrong go ahead and check those out try to find the one that is causing your issue and fix it and then it'll work now when your phone is not connected you are going to be using this remote control here to control it it has this remote eye that you need to aim at this so you have your volume up and down here now keep in mind you can still use your factory volume if you'd like but this has a secondary volume so if your factory radio has a point where it's distorting or clipping or if you're using something that has a filter on it that's affected by volume you could leave your volume at a fixed volume and then use this to control it you have mute you have your source which is going to switch between those three modes factory aftermarket or mix play pause because your phone is connected so it will control the tracks on your phone which you also have track up and track down so you can just have this in control without having to go to your device and select those features there. All right guys, so that is the new Pioneer DEQS 1000A Universal Sound Processor. We hope you guys enjoyed this as always. Fernando, if you please. All right guys, so if you like this video, please subscribe, share, like, you know where you find us, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Thanks guys, as always, you have a wonderful night and we'll see you later next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.